<laughs> yes. 39 week pregnancy update. I know it's crazy. I keep thinking she's going to come, but she doesn't. And that's okay because she's going to come on her own time. But anyways, I had my um, doctor's appointment this morning. It went really well. It was really funny. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. She was using the Doppler to like hear her heart and <clears throat> gosh, I have something in my throat. Anyway, so she, my midwife was using the Doppler to hear her um, her heart rate, and she was going like crazy. She was like moving everywhere, so it was hard for her to get a reading, and then I was getting a ton of surges. Um, and it was funny because my midwife's like, man, this kid won't stay still. <laughs> and we just started busting up laughing because it's so funny just how she said it. Like, she said that her heart rate was like 150 to 190 to 160 just because of how active she was. So we had to wait till she like calmed down to get like a good reading on her heart, but it was really funny. So I did that. They also checked. Um, so at my 37 weeks, I was one centimeter dilated and 50% thinned out or effaced. Um, this time they said I'm still about one centimeter. That hasn't changed, but I'm 80% effaced. So I have thinned out a lot more. Um, I also have um, my surges are getting a lot stronger. Um, they're still inconsistent, but they're, they're still really, they're like really strong to the point where sometimes like I just kind of have to like sit there and like relax for a second as it happens. So that was cool. So we, after she calmed down, we got our heart rate, um, measured. Everything is like so perfect and, um, she's just waiting. We're just waiting for this little girl to come. Um, and my, my midwife is so cool. She was awesome. She was saying how like, instead of like, because like I have been really antsy or anxious just because I want her to come so bad. And my midwife is like, you know, that number one rule of parenting is you can't control it. And I was like, that's true. Like I can't, I can't control when she's going to come. Like that's just up to my body. That's up to her. And so she, my midwife just was like, you know what, just really take this time, go, like, this is the last few weeks, this is, like, the time you're ever going to be alone with your husband. And I'm like, like, that's true. She was talking to Tucker and I, and I was like, yeah, that's true. It is, like, really the only time him and I will, like, ever be alone. Um, I mean, I know, like, we'll have date nights where we're drop profit parents, but she'll always, she'll always be on our mind. So it's like, okay. You know, and she, and my midwife even said to not, like, if you are constantly sitting there and thinking about, oh, is it today or is it going to happen? Like, what's going on? Then it just, like, creates anxiety and, like, then it kind of, like, postpones it. And so she said, you know, just go home and just let go. She's like, don't even really think about it. Like, your body and your baby will come when it's time. And, yeah, it could be. A week after her due date it could be tomorrow it could be whenever but just letting go and letting knowing that I can't control that and so that was actually really good for her to say to her because I have been really anxious like since I hit 37 weeks I've been really just anxious because I was I thought she's gonna come early and I thought she's gonna be there and she's not so now I'm at 39 weeks and then I have next week is her due date that's crazy next Wednesday Next Wednesday, next Wednesday is her actual due date, and who knows, she could come a week or two after that. And so um, that's like Tucker and I are really going to just take these last few weeks and just really spend a lot of time with each other and just have fun. Like tomorrow for date night, we're gonna go to Pizza Pie Cafe, yum, because I, I I got some gift cards in the mail, so we're gonna go. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go do that. We're gonna probably go to a movie and just really have spend some really good quality time with each other. And just not really stress about when she's going to come because I know that's only going to make it worse because um, we, we do have everything ready. And I'm, I mean, it's, I think it's just because I'm so excited because I've wanted this for such a long time that I'm just anxious for her to be here. But, you know, I just got to let it happen. Like, I can't control that. So, anyways, so that's kind of like my little tip, I guess, is that I have to learn is don't get anxious because, like I said, I've been really anxious since 37 weeks. And now I'm 39 weeks, so it's been like three weeks of being really anxious. And it's actually kind of made me sad. Like, I'll, like, I kind of get emotional when she doesn't come because I keep, I'm so focused on when she's going to. And so 
now this is me just like letting go, not worrying about it, just knowing she's going to come and she's going to make her appearance when she comes um, and things like that. But I'm going to definitely keep practicing my meditation, my visualization um, techniques. And I'm going to say like that has been the biggest thing. Like I think now that I'm coming up, you know, on, on the last little bit of being pregnant, like I, I'm really really grateful for the meditation and the visualization and just the deep relaxing tools that I was able to learn because I noticed like I'm I kind of call myself like the eye roller to society uh, just because I really don't believe in a lot of like how do you say it like a lot of common sayings that you get when you're pregnant or about parenting and things like that like I don't like of course I'm not parenting yet so I can really only relate to like the uh, pregnancy side of things but like I have like been <laughs> like everyone is like I will never have a baby in summer again it was miserable it was hot it was this and honestly like it hasn't been that bad like we are in the freaking 21st century like there's AC like oh I don't know I mean I, I they're just trying to strike up a conversation but like every time someone talks to me there's like are you dying because of the heat and yeah like there have been days where it's been really hot where I've been outside like on July 4th we were outside pretty much all day and that was I was dying that day like I was really hot I got like heat exhaustion or whatever and so that wasn't good but like I'm inside most days like my house has AC my car has AC like, anywhere I go has AC, so it hasn't really been that bad. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of been, like, one thing that's kind of bugged me through this pregnancy is everyone telling me that. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, I get it's hot. Like, we're having 100-degree weather days, but it's not like I'm outside all day. Like, I'm inside, and I'm totally fine. So, anyways, so that, but, like, just my, because I'm, I'm really big on mindset, and being positive because I feel like a lot of issues or a lot of complications can actually be solved by how your attitude is and how you perceive that. Um, cause like even like sleeping through pregnancy, like everyone's like, well, are you uncomfortable? I'm like, I'm a little uncomfy, but it's not, it's not like the end of the world uncomfort. Like I just, I just don't see it that way. I'm just like, like, I see it as, like, a huge blessing that my body's going through this. Like, I get, like, a lot of people have really bad pregnancies, like, terrible pregnancies. And I, like, my heart just breaks for them because I've really had it so easy. Like, I have had an awesome pregnancy, but I don't think that's just because how my body is. I really think it's because of how I've prepared my mind and how I view myself as being pregnant because like anytime I was sick like I wouldn't dawn on oh I feel like crap I'm barfing like I would be like yeah I'm not feeling good but this is something my body is going through because of all the hormone adjustments like especially my first and second trimester when I wasn't feeling all the the best but like I didn't if I focused on it then it made it worse and so if I didn't focus on it and I was like okay cool like this is something my body just naturally has to go through. I can't control it. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. So, might as well not just sit here and lay on the couch and mope and complain about it. Might as well, like, at least do something that doesn't require me to not, like, feel worse or, like, get more sick. But I didn't really focus on it. So, anyways, but, like, I loved, I loved my hypno course. Like, I have, hands down, probably the best course I've ever been through about mindset about how you perceive birth like I have people that like tell me like good luck through birth like have fun screaming and I'm like okay number one don't tell me that and then, number two like you're just saying that because that's what the media portrays that's what tv portrays like I like with how I perceive how my delivery is going and like obviously circumstances can change but like it's just the view of how people, especially women, perceive birth is kind of sad because society really changed it. Like, the media has really played a role on, 
oh, it's big lights, you're strapped in, you're screaming, a bloody murder, there's like, you know, it's like, it's not like that. Like, I've been, I've seen deliveries, like, even in, in a C-section, I've watched a C-section, it wasn't that big of a deal, like, anyways, and so, like, my hypno course was a lot about changing the mindset and fear that women have about childbirth, because they, they fear it so much that number one, they're going to die. Or, I mean, yeah, there are rare cases that that can happen. But like back in like the olden days, of course that happened more. They had terrible hygiene. They didn't have the proper tools to make it a like germ-free, really clean environment to deliver in. So that makes more sense. But like nowadays, like, like you're not, it's so rare that if a mom dies during childbirth, you know, like, I get there's complications that go on, but it's not something that really needs to be focused on, especially if you're like, if it's for your own birth, because like, and I have people ask me like, what's something like, are you scared? Are you scared to deliver? And my, I'm like, no. And they're like shocked. They're like, what? Like, you're not scared? I'm like, no. What? Like, I have no reason to be scared to deliver my baby. Like, I look forward to that day. I've been looking forward to that day to, since I was little. Like, I wanted this so bad. And so, like, it doesn't scare me. Like, I, there's no, there's no reason to be nervous because I have prepared myself so well and my mind and my breathing techniques and just everything so well that honestly, like, I'm just excited for that day. So anyways, enough of me rambling on, but I just wanted to give some like tippers to that as well as kind of what's going on. Um, I guess a little bit more symptoms. Like um, my symptoms haven't changed much. Like I said, it's really just been really strong surges, um, like really strong. Um, what else? Just I'm dilating. She's like moving more forward. My midwife said that from the cervix, Instead of, it used to be pointed back at the tailbone, but now it's starting to move forward. Um, and so it's definitely coming more forward than what it was like a few weeks ago. So that's really awesome. So I'm just, I'm so excited. And I'm really just going to focus on letting go and not be like anxious for her day to arrive. <laughs> I'm just going to chillax and spend some sweet time with my sweet hubby because I love him so much. So anyways, that's my tipper. That's my 39 weeks. We're doing awesome and I'm so excited to meet this little girl and to hold her and to kiss her and just everything. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day and that you're staying cool out in this heat like I am. And yeah, so have a good one. Okay, bye!